welcome to infinity engineering academy and in this preparation of mpsc pre exam we are going to start the elements of civil engineering subject and the weightage of this subject is 10 marks okay so basically this subject consists of two parts the first part is building materials and construction and second part is surveying of course whatever the syllabus given that was given in different terms like if you take the basics of surveying they have given like types of the maths like that okay now if you see the important topics of this first one is cement it is very very important topic and in the 2020 two questions from this topic only okay then bricks is also important steel is also important again in 2020 two questions from steel only okay and then the substructure and superstructure and automation in construction all these are like you can get maximum of one mark okay sometimes they have given the questions from this sometimes they are not given but if you take these three topics cement bricks and steel these are very very important okay then if you take the surveying part basics of surveying is very very important at least every year we can expect one question from this every year we can expect one question and then leveling also very very important and one year they have given two questions from this but last year there was no question and the remaining topics all have equal importance like that means there can be a question on that or there may not be okay so now the first topic we are going to discuss here is cement so our first topic is cement so now what is the role of cement in the construction okay so you know that cement is used as a binding material okay cement is used as what binding material in concrete and mortar okay concrete and mortar consists of different materials and in that one of them is cement and what is the purpose of cement it acts as the binding material okay then how does this cement gets the binding nature okay how does this cement gets the binding nature suppose you take the sand and add the water to the sand whether the sand behaves like a binding material no but suppose if you take the clay and add the water to the clay whether the clay behaves like the binding material or not yes clay behaves like the binding material now you take the cement and to the cement you add the water whether this behave like a binding material or not as this behave like a binding material now the point is if you take the sand it is cohesion less in nature so it will not exhibit the binding nature it will not exhibit the binding nature but if you take the clay that is a cohesive soil so that exhibits the binding nature now you take the cement now you take the cement so cement is also cohesive in nature whatever the cement particles are there they are cohesive in nature so it will also exhibit the binding nature okay so the point is cement exhibit cement exhibit the binding nature because of the cohesion and adhesion between the particles okay so the binding nature of cement is because of the cohesion and adhesion between the particles okay now what are the raw materials to manufacture the cement okay so cement is manufactured by using two raw materials first one is the limestone and second one is the clay or shale we can use either the clay or else we can use the shale but you must use what you must use the limestone so these two are the raw materials to manufacture the cement now let us see the manufacturing process of the cement so cement is basically manufactured by two methods okay first one is the dry process and second one is the wet process but whatever the method we use the raw material remain same they are limestone and clay okay so now what i am doing is first i am taking the limestone and clay separately okay i am taking the limestone and clay separately and after taking them what i am doing is i am sending them into the crushers 
I'm sending them into the crushers. Why? Because whatever the limestone is there, that is in the form of the stone. And whatever the clay is there, that is in the form of the solid. So once if you send them into the crushers, there we convert them into the powder form. We convert them into the powder form. And after converting them into the powder, we have to collect them in the storage basin. We have to collect them in the storage basin. So here in the storage basin, what we have to do is, we have to mix both the powders. Okay, we have to mix both the powders. After mixing them, we have to send them into the rotary kiln. And you know what is the purpose of the kiln? And kiln is used for what? Kiln is used for the heating. So here in the rotary kiln, we have to heat the raw materials. Now whatever the heating is there, that will be done in the absence of the oxygen. Okay, that will be done in the absence of the oxygen. So this process of heating in absence of oxygen, that is called as calcination. Okay, the process of heating in the absence of oxygen or else in the presence of less amount of oxygen, that is called as calcination. So whatever the raw material we are taking, that we are sending into the rotary kiln, there we have to do the calcination. And after doing the calcination, whatever these uh, materials are there, they are heated to the temperature of nearly 1300 to 1500 degree centigrade. Okay, that means we are heating them at very high temperatures. So this material will convert into the liquid form. Now whatever the liquid is there, that liquid has to be sent into the coolant. So whatever the liquid is there that has to be sent into the coolant and here in the coolant what we will do we will do the cooling and once if you do the cooling this will convert into the form of the clinker okay that means if you do the cooling if you cool this liquid then it will convert into the solids of small diameter okay solids of small diameter and that solid is called as clinker okay so this clinker will be basically 3 to 8 mm in diameter okay now if you if the size of the cement is 3 to 8 mm in diameter using them in the construction will be difficult and mixing them will be difficult so that's why what we have to do is whatever the clinker is there that we have to crush into the fine powder form and that process of crushing the clinker is called as pulverization okay so what is pulverization is crushing the clinker into the fine powder form so while convert while crushing it what we have to do is we have to add a material that is called as gypsum okay that is called as gypsum so how much of gypsum we have to add is two to three percent okay so now if you add two to three percent of gypsum and if you pulverize the clinker then ultimately we are going to get the cement okay so this is the process of manufacturing the cement now I told that there are two process of manufacturing. First one is the dry process, second one is the wet process. And this comes under the dry process because here in the manufacturing we have not added water anywhere. Okay, but if you take the wet process, what we have to do is, while mixing the materials, we have to add the water. Then in the rotary kiln, instead of heating the powder, what we will do is we will heat the slurry. That's the difference between dry process and wet process. Okay. Now, at the end, I told that we have to add 2 to 3 percent of gypsum. So, the purpose of adding this gypsum is to avoid the flash setting. Okay. Gypsum is added to avoid what? To avoid the flash setting. So, what is this flash setting is? Suppose if you are, this is, you are mixing the concrete here somewhere and this concrete has to be transported to a distance of 10 kilometer. Now, immediately after mixing the concrete, if the concrete sets here itself, can we transport and use it here at a distance of 10 km? Is that possible? No. That's why whatever the concrete or cement is there, that should not be subjected to the flash setting. Okay. So, this is the process of manufacturing the cement. So, remember that gypsum is added to avoid the flash setting and how much percent of gypsum we have to add? 2 to 3 percent. Okay. So let's see the chemical composition of the cement. Okay. So now, whatever the cement is there, that is manufactured using two raw materials. First one is the limestone and second one is the clay or shale. Okay. So whatever this limestone is there, it majorly consists of two chemicals. First one is the calcium oxide 
and second one is the alkalis calcium oxide means nothing but lime only okay then whatever the clay or shale is there it consists of silica alumina iron oxide and magnesia then in addition to these two materials at the end we are adding gypsum and what is the chemical formula of gypsum caso4 2h2 so this presence of gypsum causes the presence of sulfur trioxide in the cement so whatever the gypsum you are using in the cement th that will be converted into the form of the sulfur trioxide so these are the seven chemicals involved in the cement now we will see what is the what are the chemicals involved and what is the percentage of each chemical and what is the purpose of the chemical and what happens if the chemical is excess in the cement so now totally we have seven chemicals and in that major chemical is the calcium oxide okay major chemical is the calcium oxide and this calcium oxide we call as lime and the percentage of calcium oxide is 60 to 67 okay the percentage of calcium oxide is 60 to 67 and then whatever the purpose of calcium oxide is there it will cause the plasticity to the cement okay lime causes the cao causes the plasticity to the cement so what is this plasticity is if you take the cement or concrete you can convert that into the required shape okay you can convert that into the required shape suppose if you want to convert into the shape of the beam or else column you can convert that that means you can mold the material into the required shape because of the property of the plasticity here okay because of the property of plasticity okay so here if you take the lime and if it is excess in the cement then what happens is it will cause the unsoundness to the cement excess of lime causes what excess of lime causes the unsoundness what is this unsoundness is unsoundness is the expansion of the cement okay unsoundness means what it is the expansion of the cement okay and soundness means resistance of the resistance to the expansion okay soundness is the resistance to expansion and unsoundness is the expansion now whatever the cement you take whether that should be sound in nature or unsound in nature that should be sound in nature because it should resist the expansion otherwise if it is keep on expanding then what happens in the beams and columns you will have, you will get the cracks so for that purpose cement should be always sound in nature then next chemical is next chemical highest in percentage is silica that is 17 to 25 percent and this purpose of silica is first one is it reduces the shrinkage silica reduces the shrinkage okay then along with reducing the shrinkage it will give the strength to the cement okay silica gives the strength to the cement okay then if the whatever the silica is there if it is excess okay whatever the silica is there if it if it is excess it will increase the setting time it delays the setting and it increases the setting time <coughs> then next one is alumina so this alumina is 3 to 8 percent and it will cause the setting to the cement okay alumina causes what alumina causes the setting to the cement then whatever the alumina is there if it is excess it will increase the shrinkage and what do you mean by shrinkage shrinkage means reduction in volume okay then next chemical is iron oxide this iron oxide is 0.5 to 6 percent and iron oxide purpose is it will cause the color to the cement and it acts as a flux in the rotary kiln it acts as a flux in the rotary kiln so iron oxide serves these two purpose and if the iron oxide is excess basically nothing happens to the cement it will not have major disadvantage okay then next chemical is magnesia this is 0.1 to 4 percent and the purpose of magnesia is it will cause the hardness to the cement okay magnesia causes what it causes the hardness to the cement and what do you mean by hardness hardness means resistance to the scratching then if the magnesia is excess again the problem is it will cause the unsoundness to the cement already i told you what is unsoundness unsoundness means expansion then next chemical is alkalis this alkalis is 0.5 to 1 percent and basically alkalis doesn't have any purpose in the cement any purpose in the cement or concrete 
Okay, but if the alkalis are excess, then what happens is it will cause the efflorescence. Excess of alkalis causes what? It will cause the efflorescence. And what do you mean by efflorescence? Formation of white or yellow patches. Sometimes if you see the bricks are cement, bricks are concrete, you can find the white or yellow patches there. And that formation is called as what? Efflorescence. Okay, then last chemical is sulfur dioxide. And this sulfur dioxide is 1.3 to 3 percent and this sulfur dioxide purpose is it will cause the soundness to the cement. The sulfur dioxide causes what? It will cause the soundness to the cement. But if the same sulfur dioxide is excess then what happens is it will cause the unsoundness to the cement. Okay. So, if it is in normal quantity it causes the soundness. If it is in excess then it will cause the unsoundness to the cement. So, these are the seven chemicals involved in the cement, their purpose, sorry, their percentage, their purpose and what happens if the content is excess. Now, in order to remember these things easily, just write it like this, lime, silica and alumina, iron oxide, magnesia, alkalis, Alkalis means basically Na2O plus K2O and sulfur dioxide. So just take all the seven letters, they are lime, silica, alumina, iron oxide, magnesia, alkalis and sulfur dioxide. So if you write them together then it will be like LSI mass. So this LSI mass is the chemical composition of the cement okay LSI mass is the chemical composition of the cement okay remember that so last year one question asked in 2019 that was what is the percentage what is the order of percentage of the what is the what is the ascending order of or, or descending order of the percentage of the chemicals they have given like lime silica and alumina and iron and iron oxide so that will be the answer so that was the question asked in the year 2019 MPSC prelims okay so this is about the chemical composition of the cement.